That is really cool to hear. And it sounds like it's a lot uh, more intense than American Shark Tank. So um, Pedro, I'd also love to talk about your current business in, in consulting and how you were able to help out the dynamics of many Fortune 100 firms like, like Walmart, for example. So what was that like? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm gonna share my screen to, to that slide. Um, once again, it really comes through relationships, right? Right now, I'm working with Adobe, Oracle, uh, Walmart. I'll talk about Walmart. So Fortune One, it's the biggest company on earth. They have more than 2 million employees, right? And they're in more than 20 countries. And Walmart's headquarters is in Bentonville, Arkansas. So I'm working with the chief compliance officer, Daniel Trujillo from Argentina. And he was telling me they have a hard time recruiting young talent to move to Arkansas, which makes sense. Like, I'm curious, who here would work and move to Arkansas? Raise your hand. Let's see. Okay, there we go, Julian. He's a risk taker. Do we have anyone else? No, exactly, right? So one out of 12. That's less than 10%. Okay, maybe Arkansas. So what I'm doing with, their, with them is working with their executives on board opportunities to join nonprofit boards that care about the African-American, Hispanic-American communities of color so Walmart can recommit themselves to diversifying their leadership team because they want to hire young people of color and they want to open offices in other cities. So I sit with their director, with like their HR manager, senior managers, and look at their strategy. Like, where do you want to be here in five years? What percentage of your labor force is going to be millennial, Gen Z? Um, which boards do you want to promote? Which nonprofits does Walmart want to fund in order to increase their impact and commitment to the environment? Um, so it's, it's very hands-on, as you can tell. It's pretty much like boutique consulting. I don't work for McKinsey or Deloitte. Uh, I probably don't wake up at 6 a.m. like they do. Or I don't know. You guys probably know better than me about that was like big, big four KPMG consulting. But with my small team, we're really focused on like niche boutique consulting. And we work with specific clients, helping them with inclusive leadership. Another story is with Oracle. Like we're working with 30 vice presidents at Oracle Corporation on inclusive leadership. Like what does it mean to be culturally smart? What does it mean to be well-versed? And that doesn't mean you have to be a polyglot and speak French, Chinese, German, and Spanish, but that means you have to be open-minded and be aware of your bias because we're all born with biases. Awesome. Thank you, Pedro. And I think, you know, consulting in regards to uh, cultural intelligence and, and, and leadership training and inclusivity is, is definitely important now more than, than ever before. So I want to do a quick pause and, and see if anybody in the audience has any questions they want to ask openly right now. If not, I'm going to pass it off to Eli real quick. So just going back to what you were just talking about, um, it's obviously very, or it must be very intimidating, especially when you started off doing these consulting uh, experiences because you're talking to people that have such high positions and great experience and uh, are in charge of huge companies and huge uh, amounts of employees. So how do you go about like gaining their trust? How do you go about gaining their respect so that they listen because as a consultant you might even be younger than them so how do you go about getting their respect and making them take your advice seriously good question the hardest challenge for me was getting my first client because usually when you're consulting they ask you oh who you're working with Right? right now I can say, yeah, you know, I'm giving a presentation at Bristol Myers Squibb. It's a multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical. I work with Walmart. But, you know, years back I had zero, right? So that was really hard. <laughs> but I think honesty is the best policy. When I got my first client, I told them, hey, this is my first time doing this. <laughs> but I have amazing mentors, which is true. I have amazing sponsors. Does everyone know the difference between sponsorship and mentorship? Okay. Good. And so they, they were gracious. And, and then again, going back to these values, right? Like giving grace and 
I'm not talking about religion. I'm just talking about like being human and being thankful. And, and my first client, like they were like, that's okay. Like we can start with a small lunch and learn project, a small human resources consulting gig. And so little by little, as I said, this doesn't happen in weeks. This happens in years, right? I started this when I was like 20 years. Um, little by little, I started gaining my clients. And same thing with speaking. At the beginning, I spoke for free. Then someone was like, we'll pay you 200 bucks. I was like, oh, that's, that's really good. I can pay gas because California is so expensive. It's like four bucks a gallon, not like Virginia. And so little by little, same thing, right? Like people were like, we actually have a budget. And I'm like, hey, you have so many event sponsors and you're charging them to see me speak and you don't pay me. That doesn't make any sense. Like you're making, fun, you're making money out of my time and I'm volunteering, right? So those negotiating skills, and I'll share some books with you. And my book actually talks about negotiation, so you should get it. Um, uh, really helped me grow my personal consulting business with Jorge and Lily. Um, and, and learning to valuing your work, everyone here. I know we're all young and yes, we can do some volunteering stuff, but once you prove yourself that you do stuff well, don't give your work for free because time is money. Don't forget it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Pedro. And uh, I think we might have time for like one more point before we have to get going. But uh, I want to definitely to speak about receiving sponsorships from these massive corporations and, and just amazing people for Pan Peru. And so what was that like? And what were the, the cool interactions you were able to have there? Good question. Um, yeah, and I'm new in this. Pan Peru USA is only two years old. We, we got the 501c3 last year. And with a friend from San Diego, we sat down with our team and we applied together on the IRS website. I think uh, having employees that work at these large companies helped us get funding. So I can talk about Western Union. They gave us $15,000, which is a lot of money, especially in Peru. It's a lot of money uh, for these women, right? And so the process was tedious. We, we had to submit like letters of verification, our IRS diploma, good standing, um, our P&L, like our balance sheet for the past fiscal year. And we're still learning. Like we're not experts in getting grants at all. Um, as a matter of fact, right now we're working with Walmart. They want to support a computer lab and library for, for Canta. Canta is two hours north of Lima, uh, the capital, and we're, we'll be benefiting about 800 kids. And yeah, I think it, my, my approach, as you can tell, is very relational. I, when I meet an executive and they're interested in Pan Peru, I don't immediately say, hey, Venmo Pan Peru, 100 bucks or PayPal. No, no, no. I'm like, what are your values? Where are you investing today? Where do you want to see your impact? Do you value letters? Do you value newsletters? And I think that's the approach that will make you memorable, right? And I've seen it in so many universities, even in the West Coast, like people that are very dry networking. And I don't relate to that. I really encourage every single one of you to embrace that grace and just be thankful and be more relational and go on walks with people and yeah, and don't be shy. I'm going to put my email here, please. If you have any questions, like, don't be a stranger at all. And I'm grateful that Spider Ventures has supported Palm Peru. And please consider me a friend. Like, don't, don't be shy at all. I'm a, I tend to be a friendly person. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Pedro. And we have one last question from our, from our members. So, Alex, go ahead. Um, so, as you know, COVID is wrecked this place or this world and um you you have a great personality we all know that but it might be tough from some of us to you know get into that uh scary world out there shaking hands talking to people talking to these execs and it's it's daunting and during corona zoom calls can just be awkward at times as we all know and how would you just create such a great environment without the dazzling personality that you have already? <laughs> Good question. Hmm. 
if you're not that extroverted, I would advise you to blog, to write on LinkedIn, Twitter, Medium, um, attend public events, and on the Q&A question, like ask questions. Uh, a lot of people, especially in COVID, are approaching me, actually, on LinkedIn. It's kind of crazy. I used to be doing my messages, but now it's floating. And I'm actually a bit sad, but I have a teammate. Like, she's taking care of all my LinkedIn messages. I'm super blessed. But, like, yeah, like, take advantage of LinkedIn. For me, I love LinkedIn. So if everyone adds me on LinkedIn, I'd be super happy. Microsoft doesn't pay me to say this, by the way. Um, and they're not my client, not yet. And... Um, Another way is being flexible in what they're comfortable with. Sometimes people don't want to show their face, and that's fine. Sometimes people just want to do an audio call. Sometimes people just want to do texting, which is fine, or slacking. Uh, yeah, just be comfortable. Like, whatever the mentor or the person, uh, Alex, and thank you, it's a good question. Like, some people told me, they were like, oh, I'm not comfortable accepting you on LinkedIn yet. And that's fine. I have to be respectful. I'm like, that's okay. We can just email every now and then, you know? Um, I have a funny story, last story, I promise. Uh, so Professor Tom Kosnick, right? I showed a picture of him. We didn't catch up in two years. And so my book was published last year. I'm working on a second one right now. And he didn't know that I gave a TED Talk and the book and stuff. So he, he saw my WhatsApp uh, picture and he, he found me, right? And he literally FaceTimes me at 1 a.m. Eastern time, which was 10 p.m. Pacific. And good things happen sometimes after midnight. And I obviously pick up because sometimes I work. I love working. So sometimes I just work too much. And uh, I, I don't drink coffee or anything. I promise. This is like my normal mode. I can be more energetic. And so <laughs> we have a one hour conversation with Tom. And he was like, You've done so much in a year and a half. We haven't talked. And I'm seeing him next week. And um, I think the principle here is just being flexible. Like, obviously, for Tom, he can only talk at 10 p.m. And it's up to you if you're willing to do the sacrifice, right? Same to you. If you're willing to just do email conversations with people um, or ask them, like, hey, I know we can't sit in a restaurant, but are you willing to walk around campus just for 20 minutes around RBS, the Robin School of Business? Or do you want to go to the basketball court and just stand six feet apart? Like, you'd be surprised. I, I was at Stanford yesterday. There are people there taking advantage of COVID and going hiking with professors. So it's beautiful that the dean is here, right? He was here a few minutes ago. So take advantage of these relationships. Thank you so much. And I think that's a, that's a great point to end on, Pedro. I think if you are dedicated, persistent, and, and willing to make that that sacrifice, you can achieve these these incredible relationships. And who knows where, where they can lead you? I mean, to you, you're one of the the, the interactions you had at, at your, in your freshman year in the cafeteria led to your first investor. So it's pretty impressive these 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 relationships in the end. So. Um, first of all, thank you so much, Pedro, for joining us today. I think we had a fantastic conversation. So we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much.